Denny Patterson, Instinct Magazine. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So let me begin by asking, how did the idea for Uncoupled come to fruition, and what made you want to adapt it into a Netflix series? Um, well, we both were interested in the idea of telling a story about um, you know, uh, sort of a romantic comedy with a, gay, with a gay lead, and thought about this inciting incident of a breakup and how to make this, how to make this idea universal. And I think breakups are so universal, especially being blindsided by a breakup and the, the idea of heartbreak reinvention, um, you know, starting over. I think, I think that at a certain age, everyone's been on one side or another of a breakup, gay, straight, doesn't matter. So that was our sort of jumping off point. And then Jeffrey and I started thinking about, you know, what kind of um, world, what kind of world and what kind of show, and what kind of show this could be. Obviously we wanted to, we wanted to make a comedy that also had a lot of heart and emotion. Mm -hmm, for sure. What makes a breakup a good jumping off point for a rom-com? Well, the guy's 48 years old, so what's he been doing for the first 47 years before yeah. that? If he, was he in a bunch of relationships? Was he in, if, if you're suddenly devastated because your person that you thought you were going to live with for the rest of your life, person you trust most of the world, blindsides you like this, that seemed like the most traumatic launching point we could come up with you know, how do you rise from the ashes of that yeah. and enter the dating world? And so that specificity of that breakup seemed like really rich material for us. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I read in another article that when it was time to cast a show, Neil Patrick Harris was your first choice. What made him perfect for the role of Michael? You know, I, I think he's such a skilled, talented actor who's um, as as just excelled in so many, you know, in, in, in film and television on stage. Um, but I, I felt that he just like, you know, as much as we've seen him and he st was still untapped and hadn't found like a role that was going to be able to give him everything that we knew we could give him with this role and play something that was, um, so close to himself, reveal so much vulnerability, which is something that the character really does that I think is, is like unique for any, any male character in any series anywhere to sort of express so much vulnerability and pain while still keeping it funny. So, um, you know, I, I, I think he's just such a, you know, a, a gifted actor that just cannot imagine the series without him. Mm -hmm, great. And do you both believe that this series is timely for today's pop culture climate? Is what? Is this series timely for today's pop culture climate? I think that the fact that you're just telling a story that happens to be from a gay man's perspective, but is so universal and so relatable, I think it makes it timely because it's not special in any way. Like, this is a super gay story about super gay people. This is about a human being who happens to be gay. His friends and he have been gay a long time. That's yeah. not the first thing they are. Mm -hmm. And they, so, don't, they don't live in an exclusively, you know, the world is not exclusively a world of gay men. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that makes it a, why the pop culture moment is now is because you have a service like Netflix that says yes to a show like this and says, yeah. yes, we have an audience for the show and we want to like put it on an air in 140 countries. So <laughs> I think that that's the difference is that this, it, it's really that the culture is now ready for this show because the audience is there for this show. Perfect. Darren, Jeffrey, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you, Dan.